All right, welcome back to Grasshopper Fundamentals. I want to spend a few minutes talking about groups and clusters uh, and user objects and a few other tricks that we can use to uh, navigate the viewport more efficiently, uh, especially when we're getting to larger scripts, okay? So um, first, let's talk about grouping. You know, uh, basically what all this stuff comes down to what we're talking about in this um, video, it won't affect the functionality of the script. This is going to affect the efficiency at which we use the script. It's going to it's going to affect the um, the clarity, the visual clarity of the user interface. It's going to affect the um, the workflow and uh, the ease of use of the of the definition. Okay, and so. Group, uh, so groups, groups are only, uh, yeah, again, groups only have a visual property, essentially. Uh, and what a group does is um, we can take a set of components, we can right click the canvas anywhere, and we can click group, and we put a box around it. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, you know, if our, if our script is small enough, then this doesn't really matter. This is, these are a few different variations of a similar form generating uh, generation. Um, and it, and it the, you know, again, a script this big doesn't really matter. This starts to get a little bit bigger. Uh, when we get to this size uh, or bigger, I like to start grouping things so that I can keep track of what parts of the script do what. And I want sort of a very easy visual cue, okay? So if I take the whole thing and I group it, uh, now we can actually just grab the group and we can move the whole group at once. Um, we can group, uh, I'm gonna group the output, and I can change the color of the group um, to help me sort of identify, identify it faster. So it's it really helps when you change colors. Um, your, brain will, your brain will associate different colors to different parts of the script. Um, and maybe even you can develop your own personal standard, maybe your preview, uh, maybe the last parts of the object, the final geometry in the preview or something. Maybe that's always red or something like that. It's up to you. It's up to you how you want to go about that. But um, grouping is a good way to visually identify uh, parts of the script um, efficiently. So with the group, we can also change the sort of shape of it. Um, I generally only use the rectangle personally, but these, some of these other shapes might be useful um, to you guys. And uh, we can also use the group to select all the objects at once. Spe this is especially helpful if it's a very large part of the definition. Uh, we can use these tools here to add and remove things from the group. Okay. And we can also make a new default color. Um, so that's the extent of, of groups fundamentally. It's fairly simple and, uh, we can kind of take this a step further and talk about clusters. So clusters are a little bit more complex. They, um, and there's a few different ways to approach developing a cluster. So we've grouped this together because it all kind of shares, I mean, everything that's happening here is coming out of one output. So this could be a good it could be a good place to make a cluster. Um, oh, one more thing about groups. Uh, speaking of, uh, cluster has a similar property, but that, which reminded me, there's one more thing about groups is that you can name this. So I'm going to call it like base geometry. This is especially useful if you have, especially useful if you have uh, many different groups, a large definition, or if you're going to use this file a few weeks or months down the line. Uh, it's going to help you remember what this part of the group does or which, what this group does. Okay. So, uh, we can do a similar thing with, uh, with a cluster. Um, but it's, it's fundamentally, well, it's very different. Okay. Let's get into it. There's a few different ways that we can approach a cluster. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how that works. Um, we can take, so a cluster takes all the components, basically just jams them into one user made component. Okay. So put very simply, you just take all these components and I'm going to show you, this is not necessarily what you want to do, but you can take all these components and then we can right click, we can cluster. Okay. 
now we have all this stuff inside this cluster so everything that you just saw and what we can do here um, is we we have a little preview if we hover over it we can enter the cluster we can make our edits this way and this component here is our cluster output okay and then we can go to this box and we can save discard or just return okay now um, but we had the problem here I mean this looks very nice I mean we got we really saved a lot of space on the canvas we simplified it a lot but we don't have access to the number sliders that used to be there so I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I just did okay and I want to actually still have access to these number sliders so I'm gonna pull them out a little bit and um, I'm going to grab this grab the only these components so basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, you only want to cluster something if you're not going to be accessing it very regularly or if your script is huge you're going to have to make a lot of clusters anyways and you're just going to have to get used to going in and out of clusters uh, but if you can you know you, if you can you're going to want to only uh, put you're going to limit how much you want to put into a cluster to only the objects that you're using the least so i'm not really going to need to access these i'm just going to use these sliders and so i'm only going to put these into a cluster okay so that's a little bit better um, and now we still have our inputs and we have a few of our outputs and we can still go in here but you'll and you'll notice that we have these uh, these these are called cluster inputs okay and um, but now uh, you'll notice that um, uh, so okay so none of these are named um, none of these uh, are named so if we we might not know what they are doing so we can change the name of these um, but I don't really remember what this one does at this point so I'm a little bit confused right so that's that's the one of the problems with this method of creating a cluster is I can't really remember what each one of these letters does and I could look at it here and I go well okay this I know this is the number of points in the base curve so I could change the name of this I could change the name of this to uh, points in base curve and I'm just gonna leave the nickname oh, I'll just do the same thing points in base okay you can add a description if you want and so what I did was I just double clicked it to get into there okay and if I go out now it, it didn't show up on the uh, it didn't show up here but it will show up if I um, no I guess it wasn't won't show up if I hover over it so uh, what I'm getting what I'm getting to is that there's a different way to make a cluster and uh, and uh, you know it's not I mean there's a compromise it might take a little bit longer but you can label it all first and then make a cluster so that your labels are a bit more clear okay and this is how we do it uh, again it's there's a compromise either way so you're gonna have to decide the, the best way that you want to go about this but this is generally how I do it because I like having my labels clear if you don't if you don't mind that your labels uh, your input and your output labels aren't clear then don't bother doing this because it's gonna take a little bit longer um, but I like the clarity of it so what we can do in in the param category in the utility we can find the cluster input or we can just type it in input Um, and then we can actually just attach it just like this and so this I know that this is the diameter and I'll call it diameter we can just uh, start naming all of these things uh, manually this is the number number of points okay plug that in plug that into here and this is the same oh yeah this is the same um, okay I should have mentioned that before uh, this 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 is the same input but it actually we actually had both the X and the D on the input of our um, uh, of our cluster which is uh, not necessary it's gonna it's too messy so I should have mentioned that uh, 
you know, we only have three sliders, but we ended up having like five inputs and it's because it was using a separate input for this one and this one, even though they were coming from the same slider. So this, this is also a better method to do for that reason, because we're going to have less, um, less inputs. I'll show you what I, I'll show you, uh, what I mean instead of just saying it. Okay. Let me show you what it looked like. Okay. So you see what I mean? We have five inputs, but we only have three sliders. These are redundant because um, this input is the same as uh, this one. They're using the same input. So we don't need separate inputs in that cluster, which is why it might be better to, to build it the way that I was showing you. So let's get back to that, finish that off. Um, okay, so we can do our inputs. Our inputs are good and we, can, we only need uh, two, we only need one output. Okay, so we can go to here and I don't need to label that because I know what it is. So let's take all of that. We have to include the cluster components We can take all of that. We can create our cluster that way and then we can plug in our, um, our sliders and drop it on there. And now we're good, good to go. So it's a lot cleaner. Uh, a lot cleaner we have we have labels we only have three inputs we can still go in and make our uh, modifications if we need to okay now you'll notice um you'll notice that uh the preview um for the output is on but the preview for everything else that's going on in here is not on like the vector the uh vector display if you do want that to be on, all you have to do is hover over it and go to preview contents. And then you can see it's going to preview everything that's being previewed in the cluster, but all this stuff is turned off. So it's only going to preview this stuff basically, right? Only the things that are where the preview is on. Okay. Oops. Okay, cool. And um, what else we got here? We have some other, we can set up different properties. We can name the cluster, uh, a few different ways to name it. Um, you know, and you can put in other information if you want to. Okay, so now when we hover over it, we can see the name that we've, uh, the name that we've given it, um, and uh, the description, if we gave it a description. And if we go, if we turn off our icons, we can see that name here. And, uh, you can add an icon to this also. Oops, wrong one. You can add um, you can add an icon here if you if you make an icon. I've done that a few times. It's like a ten by ten pixel image. I think I think it's ten by ten or or twelve by twelve or uh, no, I don't know what it is. Twenty five by twenty five. Anyways, you can look it up. Um, make a little icon in Photoshop or something, and you can add it uh, to your cl cluster if you want to. You can also, um, you know, do some other stuff. You can assign a password. You can export it. Um, you can also explode it. Um, it's not a super reliable way to go back. Uh, if you're not sure whether your cluster is going to work, I would maybe. Um, well, I don't know. I would, I would maybe save your original, um, original script before you start making clusters, because. Even once you explode it, it's not always gonna go back to um, what it was before. This one worked pretty well. This one went back pretty well. Okay, and uh, so what, the next thing we can do with the cluster is if we know that we're gonna do this often, I don't think I would do it with this cluster, but if we're, if we're making a cluster that we think we're gonna use often, is we can click on it and we can go to, um, to file and create user object and it's actually going to save um so i'll call this so call this a cluster test it's actually going to save and this is where we can add our icons and stuff this is a good place to add an icon because we're going to save this um into our user folder our user category okay so i've just saved it and if we go to uh our user category just disappeared here it is. 
here it is user category um we have our um our user saved uh, clusters so we can go and treat it like a component basically mm -hmm. and uh so this is a this is a good reason to uh, add an icon so you can identify it much more easily than the traditional than the, the box okay Oh, we, we also have uh, these. We also have these tools. I'll just mention quickly. We have these tools here where we can highlight the. We can highlight a bunch of components and we can align them. We can align them to, in certain ways. We can make them evenly spaced. Okay, space them out properly. That's another way to organize the canvas. But another thing that we can do that's a little bit different. You know, we talked about specifically about cleaning up the components and cleaning up the canvas. But if we have a, a really big definition. One thing we can do to help us move around the definition is we can use um, we can use this jump jump component here. So we'll add one jump over here. Let's say this is a big definition, and we want to go between the graph mapper and this little area here. Because well, let's say we are adjusting the shape, changing changing this. Okay, whatever. And then we want to go to the graph mapper and change the shape of the profile of the 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 revolution profile. Okay, if I double click this, it's gonna bring me shoot me over to the other jump icon. Perfect. And now I can you know start modifying uh, the graph mapper. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully these methods help you uh, sort of uh, clean up your canvas, keep everything a little bit more organized and help you move through your definition more efficiently. So I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.